What's up everybody? Thrillbilly here. Today I'm going to be working on the 97 Pontiac Firebird. If you own a Firebird, you've got the beloved pop-up headlights. They're awesome when they work. If you have a Firebird, you also know you have the infamous pop-up headlights, where when they don't work, you know it. Have a look. Don't oh, yeah. do that to my car! <laughs> so is everybody else. So, I got out to my car the other day and I go to leave for work. And it's a little bit early, so dusk yet, so I decided to hit the old switch and let the pop-up headlights do their job. The driver's side headlight popped up, but the passenger did not. No noise, no grinding sounds, nothing. It just didn't work. So I flipped it off and turned it back on. Bolt popped back up. Good to go. Next day I go out to the car, I get into it uh, to leave and hit the lights to pop them up. And then I get that brrrr sound. They grind them. And anytime I ever hit the uh, key fob on my keys to lock or unlock the car, the headlights pop up and close and they do the infamous grinding sound. So, which can be demonstrated here. Here's what happens when I go to lock the car. Here's when I go to unlock the car. That's annoying. So anyway, got on the old eBay and found a headlight repair kit. I go to any other big store online to find a whole unit. Just pop in the old, pop out the old one, pop in the new one, and call it good. Probably, but they're kind of expensive. So this kit comes with new gear, new hardware, instructions, and we'll try to get that done tonight. But uh, I'll get you in a little tighter on this kit here in just a minute. But first things first, and then we'll work on getting the headlight motor out of the vehicle and get this baby repaired so that it doesn't freak out my wife every time she tries to drive the car, which kind of funny the first time it happened she was freaking out so let's get her fixed and I'm going to unplug the light motor next thing is let's take the black shroud off the headlight assembly and then get that out of the way so you can get down underneath and unbolt the motor from the actuator arm and all that stuff so we can extract the motor to get on the workbench. Take these four screws off. Go after that nut right there. I believe I believe it's a ten millimeter. I was correct. Definitely. Got the nut off. Now I've got to get this this uh, actuator this lever off of that shaft, but that's going to prove difficult because it's rusted on there. So I'm going to go get some penetrating oil. All right, so I got the old uh, peanut butter penetrating oil here.
All right, so this bolt here, there's one right here, and one back here. So this one here, here, and there. I'm gonna get those loose enough. Once I get the, the shaft pried off, I'm gonna get a breaker bar, and, or a pry bar, and see if I can get that taken off. actuator arm. Now that that's disconnected obviously it's going to cause the headlamp to drop so I get something to hold that up while I work on those bolts. All right, so I got my pry bar jammed in there. I'm going to work on this 10 millimeter Got all these have kind of like a jam, uh, nut on the back side, so you got the bolt and a nut. I'm gonna have to get a 10 millimeter box end wrench to hold that nut still as I spin the bolt out. fine threads on it so this is going to take a while. Got the nut off the end of that. Uh, two more to go. I won't bore you with all the details but got one out two more to go. Well, as you can see, I got the motor out of the Firebird. Um, just really simple. One, two, three bolt holes. Uh, that's a number that's on the side of it. I don't know if that means anything. I don't know if this is the original. I don't know. I don't know if this is original equipment or if this is a rebuilt unit. Or remanufactured. But I gotta get inside there. This is what comes in the kit. I went with anodized aluminum, or so it was said. I went with an aluminum drive gear on this thing. Really lightweight. They have brass ones, and all over the eBay listing said, much lighter, better than brass. I bought it. I don't know. If it lasts, it lasts. If it doesn't, then I'll know not to use aluminum again. Uh, Lubrication for the gear, uh, glue for the the cover, and this little round thing's got to go inside. I believe this fits down in there, like that, something like that. I'll get there. I don't know what this is for. I don't seem to have one in my car. At least I didn't see it when I took it off. I don't know if it. I don't know. I don't know what it's for. We'll figure it out. And it's got a plastic o-ring, bushing, bearing, something. And the rubber band is to wrap around the inspection cover um, or the access cover after you glue it. So it'll hold it tight, hold it down so that it'll sufficiently dry. I've already read through the instructions once and made it very clear do not get any junk on the mating surface between the access panel and the actual body of the motor assembly. Got to keep all that junk out of it. Keep keep these gears from getting tore up. So I got to get a small pry tool, and this is actually just glued down. I don't know how either with that black butyl tape or silicone or something. It's holding this inspection cover on, so I'm gonna have to peel this off and clean the surface thoroughly. And then I've got to get 
what I inspect and what I'm anticipating I'm finding is just powder in there from the nylon thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that taken off. That right, so looks like the best place to attack this is at this 90 degree between the bolt hole and the uh, cylinder here. Let's go after it right here. Just kind of start prying it up. I did take my heat gun to this and just kind of held my heat gun on this corner trying to get maybe some of that adhesive to loosen up a little bit. Definitely do not want to crack this thing. Instruction says you'll hear it pop loose, which that was definitely a popping sound. Scary. I don't want this to snap. like that sound. grease that's in there. Try to clean this out. Trying not to get it on the mating surface of the I gotta put the glue. Alright, start pulling this stuff out. A lot of this stuff is kind of rusty so I'm gonna take a little bit of a polish to it, try to get some of that rust off. Here's my missing tooth. Right there. Definitely see a cupping action. Definitely see a cupping action going on the teeth here. But I was expecting to see this worn down to a nub. But two teeth are missing here, and then these other two or three here are pretty, uh, pretty, pretty uh, wallered out, pretty bowl shaped. Okay, so that's what the inside looks like. This is spinning. Spinning my knob, the knob here. Not a lot to it. Looks pretty simple. I'm gonna try to get this old grease out of there. I'm not gonna bore you with that. And then uh, we'll work on getting this rebuilt, put it back together. 
All right, a little bit of update here. What I've been doing is kind of preparing all the surfaces, um, trying to keep them clean, trying not to get any oil or grease on the mating surfaces between these two, and just cleaned out all the old grease out of the, out of the gear teeth and out of all that. And I'm working on getting this put back into the housing there. Um, I've got this shaft kind of cleaned up. I just kind of scuffed it a little bit with some fine sandpaper to try to get a lot of the rust off of it. I've got to get this through here, put this rubber bumper on it. I've got to get lubrication on the shaft here down into the housing and then once I get that done I can put this together shove that in there and then lubricate the teeth and then set that down in there so let's kind of get this cleaned up make sure there's no dirt or junk inside these teeth to prematurely wear it out looks like we're good so got my lubricant that came in the package Spin this a little bit just to set the grease into the teeth. comes the fun part. <laughs> Gluing the housing lid back onto this. I did miss a step. I'm supposed to put this plastic washer between shaft and the casing. I'm going to take a little bit of this old grease let's kind of lubricate this plastic washer a little bit There wasn't one on there, so I guess that's an upgrade. Oh, guess it's just to try to make this move a little more freely, less bindage. I'm getting. instructions basically scream at you to say not getting any grease on the 
contact surface here where this is going to meet, and I just did. So. how much glue to put on here. Try to level this up so it doesn't run. And then have this nearby, glue it, stick it on there, wrap it over band around it several times to get the cure. And they say during the first 30 minutes of it being in contact, spin the motor so that in case this goops on too thick and it runs down, you don't want to glue your gear in place. So Smart. Here we go. Help if I puncture the right thing. Said it comes out fast and they weren't lying. Right, here goes nothing. direction. Good grief. Here we go. Something like that, maybe. Recommend that you allow the adhesive to cure for at least six hours before installation. Um, let it feel fully cure for 24 hours if you really want to go the safe route. That's what I'm going to do because it's late. I'm going to go ahead and let this sit. Get back to it tomorrow night and work on getting this back in the car. So that's it for now. I'll uh, get you back in here when I've got updates. This has had a chance to sit overnight and pretty much all day today. Um, got off of work, come back out in the garage. I'm going to put this back in the car. I went ahead and added these clamps. I didn't think that rubber band was going to do the trick for me. I would say that cover is sufficiently glued down. That's good. Make sure it still spins. which it does. Now I'm going to take my three bolts uh, and my screws for my shroud and I'm going to head back out to the car and try to get this thing reinstalled so I'll meet you back out there. Alright, before I go out to the car I forgot one thing which is this T-brace and there was a plastic washer I installed in it. According to the instructions, put the plastic washer into the T-brace, set it down to where the washer is up against the housing, and then 
these three bolt holes line up. I have no idea why that's on there. Doesn't really explain why it's on there in the instructions. Um, but they say to add it. Okay, I'll add it. Um, I don't know if this adds any structural integrity to anything. I don't know. But um, take my 10 millimeter wrench, <coughs> my socket, Phillips head screwdriver, all my bolts and screws, and headlights around, along with the motor. Let's head back out of the car. As a reminder, this is now loose because it is not obviously connected to the car anymore. So I may have to figure out a way to hold this up. Uh, I got lazy and didn't want to really investigate how to hold it up, so I'm just going to go without it. Go ahead and reattach the arm mechanism for the light assembly. Got the nut on there, so see that. Drive shaft for the motor, connect to the swing arm. Alright, let's uh torque it down. My dad always told me to work smarter not harder. So I'm going to ditch this long socket wrench which is making it really difficult to get down there. I'm going to go to this ratcheting wrench. Now what they say to do is run the headlight assembly full up and down, make sure there's no binding, everything's in correctly, go lock to lock with it. Alright, there's the bump. Now, try to raise it all the way up. Alright, lock to lock, it works. motor harness has been plugged back in and I'm going to cycle the lights here.
most notably is no more grinding sound. Sweet. Just two missing teeth on that gear caused that issue. Interesting. One last thing that I want to check. What I was doing before, if I would hit the lock or unlock buttons, they'd cycle the lights then. Of course you'd hear the grinding sound. So let's hit the lock. Sweet. Unlock. Well, there you have it. That's how you fix the motor gear on a 1997 Pontiac Firebird. I believe this probably holds true for 93 to 02. I don't know. Works for my 97. Fellas, in all seriousness, super easy job. If you have a 10 millimeter wrench or a socket, you can do this. Flat blade screwdriver, get the inspection cover off. Really the scariest part about this whole ordeal was getting that that cover off of the, the motor assembly. You hear them cracks and those popping as you're releasing the glue on that. It's, it's a little frightening. Do not use a heat gun. I used my heat gun thinking I was going to loosen up the adhesive. What I actually did was made the plastic pliable enough that when I pried up on it, it deformed it. So when I went to go put it back on, it wasn't sitting flush in the corner, which is bad. So I threw the heat gun back on it and I kind of bent it back into shape and let it cool down. Do not use a heat gun. I can't remember how much I paid for that kit. I want to say it was anywhere from 40, 40 to $50 for that kit. If you research uh, new motors for these, just the whole assembly, um, it's definitely more than 50 bucks. Um, some place will probably run you about 100, a couple hundred dollars on a new, on a new motor. The kit was really awesome. Gave me everything I needed to get the job done minus the tools of course but it's done I'm glad uh, this thing isn't making that freaky grinding sound anymore should make the wife happy when she drives the car again you'll notice that I did not change the driver's side gear I didn't want to do that right now if it ain't broke don't fix it usually when you got consumable parts like that you want to do them in pairs not doing it so when this one goes out, I know where to go to get a new one, and I have the confidence I can tackle it pretty quick. So once again, guys, thanks for watching. If you're so inclined, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. God bless. We'll see you next time.